All right, hello there. I am Pupo on One, and we are getting ready to start the third Fist by Chance qualifier for the KO division. This is again AOS Virtual Progressive 2 Show 8A. So let's take a look at the four men involved in this third Fist by Chance qualifier. As you already know, we already got everything set up, but you know. That you see it right here but we can also see what's coming up afterwards so those are the four people as I already explained where it got set up so let's go right into the game and we can get started as you already know we got 26 new characters are that are part of AOS virtual course 2 so far we seen a total of what six and six eight new characters been tested out so far there were we didn't get to see what was that two and three so we didn't get to see five characters be tested out those were part of the faction three and the combatants and that's only because their teammates were able to sweep the opponents so that's why we can see those characters so as you already know i checked all this to make sure all this is on there correctly before we even go into the match for the tournament in this case. So, making sure all this is good before we get started. Alright, without further ado, let's go into this tournament. This is part chance tournament. So, let's show you the rules right here. And again, I'll show you them in English which is up here. I don't know what's going on with my teeth. Every once in a while I feel like I'm making a whistle sound. But here you go. For the KO Division's fifth five chance qualifier rules. I already done this twice already so I'm not gonna really say what's going on. I'm just gonna let you know that everything is correct. I already made sure of that. So we can basically Make sure it's on the hardest difficulty, and we can basically get started. So up first, we will have Legway going up against Victor Flawless. Legway, I call him Legway because in Legway you can use five, nine weapons. You can use punches, kicks, elbows, knees, and headbutts. So you can even use your head to attack your opponent in Legway. Yeah, it's also called or I'm not sure if that's the exact same thing, Burmese boxing. Yeah, look it up. It's pretty freaking good. Or right, look up the king of Legway, which is Dave Ledoux. His first name is Dave. David, I mean. D A V I D. His last name is Ledoux. L E D U C. Good as stuff. He got information on all that stuff. Also, how like they train and stuff like that. And you know, he got my favorite video is also is actually called um, conditioning your knuckles for because it's basically bare knuckle fighting. That's what Legway is, bare knuckle fighting. And like he got a video called conditioning your knuckles. For it. That's a very good video. Like. Unlike a lot of other things, I think literally like he got where he does different types of push-ups to like strip in the knuckles and like make them harder and stuff like that. I forget what other stuff he does, but like that's one of the way he conditions his knuckles. He does push-ups on them, but they're in a certain way. So basically how I made my leg weight character of nine weapons is that I basically, he's, none of his stuff is similar to Mr. Muay Thai at all, but what I basically kind of did with him was that he got like Muay Thai stuff, but he also has headbutt stuff. So he got a lot of the Muay Thai stuff with the knees and stuff, you just saw him throw another jumping knee, but he also got like headbutts and stuff, so he got like the Muay Thai, he got elbows, he got knees punches and kicks but he also have headbutts. <laughs> right, 
right now, I almost didn't, I almost didn't notice that freaking, um, Victor Flawless is one of my creator wrestlers. I almost forgot that he's one of my creator wrestlers also because I thought he was just a character who was on the game who Legway was facing up with. Yeah, he's one of my boxers. He's more of a brawling type boxer than anything. Victor Flawless. And if you guessed it, his name basically comes from more combat. Flawless Victory, but I call him Victor as his first name and his last name is Flawless. So that's why he's Victor Flawless instead of Flawless Victory. That's where his name comes from. Spice though, somewhat of a brawler. I can't think of nobody who it probably like represents. Oh, that jumping knee finally did that knockdown damage for Legway. Yeah. He already hit him with two of them, but both those two just backed him up. You know, it just pushed him back. That's how he got the knockdown with it. with the power driver or cradle is it called cradle power driver I'm not sure yeah it's called cradle power driver because the one that Kevin always does is called I believe the package power driver yeah and then the one that um Cactus Jack uses is called a, I forget what it's called but it's a pulling power driver the one where you pull them by the um by the top of their outfit, or their, you know, their pants or whatever, pants or shorts or whatever, or tights. Yeah, that's a pulling power driver. I don't know what the proper name for it is, but that's what I call it. So far, if the legway is winning this first round, we're definitely going to probably see a, a second round. But yeah, he's more of a brawling type slash dirty boxer, you know. Not that he particularly fights dirty, it's just that he uses headbutts and the whole nine yards to try to get, get his wings and stuff off. But right now, he's going to need to do something because he is going to the second round being down by one knockout. But that doesn't mean nothing. They got a whole three minutes for somebody to either win by blood stoppage or get the whole entire three knockdowns or something. There you go. Victor Flawless finally gets a knockdown. He gets it with the the running burning lariat clothesline or lariat. I think I think the difference is that one is called lariat and another one's called a clothesline. So what he did was a lariat, which is more like a strike with your arm than just trying to knock somebody down with your arm. That's what the clothesline is. Because the clothesline is just you hit them with the arm. You know to knock them down whereas a lariat is to try to take their head off and it looks more like a strike than a simple clothesline yeah but he's up by two knockdowns no i don't think that's him who is who's who won okay. yeah oh wait legway is player one he is the um red point so yeah they did both get their stuff and Legway and Victor Forrest are tied up right now. We're going to see who comes out on top. Yeah, so they both, they both are like extreme versions of like different fights though. That. So like everybody knows Muay Thai and stuff like that, but Legway is like I think Legway is probably like where like um you know Muay Thai actually came from, but they decided to like just do it with like elbows and knees and punches and kicks. But like I don't know which one is more better as far as like technique wise and stuff like that. But and interestingly enough, even though. You just saw him win with the reverse DDT driver. Interesting enough, they both have the same finisher actually. They both use the um the um what's it called? 
the um, Burning Lariat finisher for their front grapple. Also, Myth, I believe, uses that as well. So there's three characters I created that has that. Two of them are boxers, and one of them is the Legway character I created. He so happy to be called Legway. I may change up his name, come something else besides just playing on Legway, but that was an interesting match, man. It went down to the wire because they were both tied and they both were able to get two knockdowns. So that was a very competitive match. You know? Now, this is your first time getting to see, um, what's his name? The Beast, Rex. Now, he's basically, like, think of all, like, the different type of, like, Mike Tyson characters and stuff like that. But he's more so, like, Balrog. You know, than anything like the video game characters are supposed to be like Mike Tyson. But think of Balrog when you think of him in the sense of how he fights and stuff like that. Yeah. And the character he goes against got some strikes of his own and stuff like that. So he's not, you know, somebody who's going to necessarily be you know, taken out by Rex. The Rex may have to work for this a little to try to this finish if he can. It's not an easy opponent that he's going against. So far, he's being dominated by, you know, I think his name is I think I call him Icky, um, Ikda, Ikda, or something like that, or they suck. Suke, they suke, they suke, yeah, they suke. Yeah, because the other dude's name is Ken Suke. Yeah, so his name is Dave Suke. So that's what we'll just call him during this match, cause... So yeah, Suke is already bleeding. You know, which is not a good thing to be bleeding already during this match. But he's building for his finisher, which I do believe is a grappling finisher. I think it's like an arm bar or something. I'm not sure. He's going for his back one, which is, oh! That's good, you know, that release German suplex. The big KO damage, that's good. But he got his first knockdown. I did not, I did not remember what his back finisher was at all, you know? Oh shit, Rex may be in trouble, man. He gotta get something going. You know, he better get something going. He's, he can possibly end up losing it. So Rex is somewhat like, um, you know, he is somewhat like, what's that character that just fought um, Victor Flawless, whereas he's, he used some dirty tactics and stuff like that. He has a head, but I believe, and stuff like that. So, you know, they somewhat similar in that aspect of their fighting styles and stuff. Daisuke is freaking dominating this match so far. But he gotta watch out for that blood damage, man. He gotta watch out for that. You know, he's already bleeding, so you know, all he needs one more that he's out of there. So he gotta be worried of that, you know, getting hit again with something that can make him bleed. Also gotta be where he's taking knockdowns, period, you know. And there goes Rex's first knockdown. He hit him with that rising body shot that does kill damage. Other than him, I do believe that I probably got two or more characters, but the main character that you already know that does a rising body shot that does kill damage is um, Karate Master. He has one, and his does KO damage. You know, he does the same move. His does tail damage as well. 
All right, this is gonna end the round with the score being tied to the two. And one thing that's any significance is that I believe Daisuke dominated that first round. And on top of that, one thing Rex was able to do was tie up. Plus, you know, get the, what's his name? He was able to tie it up as well. Damn. I was going to say, as well as make him bleed, but like, he just got that haymaker type. That super overhand punch, or that charged up super hand, overhand punch. That kind of reminds me of one of the punches that, um, what's the name uses, um, Barrog uses and stuff like that. So that's why I gave him that punch, and it does KO damage. That was kind of like the punch I thought about giving to, um, you know, PKO when I first started creating him, but I decided against that and gave him something else instead. You know, that was supposed to be his move. It was supposed to be one of his strong strikes, and I ended up making it his, um, when they coming off the rope strike. And then I decided not to have that, just gave him the Fury Punch instead, and then, you know, I eventually got the low drop kick with that roundhouse head kick, and, you know, the flipping drop kick that um does KO damage, I may do KO damage, along with that low drop kick to the knee that does KO damage, also, yeah. The Suke, you know, wear him down all you want, but you gotta start getting those, you know, knockdowns, man, because he needs another knockdown. He gotta at least tie this up, or he gotta get the blood stoppers, but I don't, see, I don't think he got too many moves that can do blood damage. But you can always get blood damage, like, you see that kick right there? That can do blood damage for you, and the one where, like, somebody's trying to when you, they're near your head when you're on your back as well, you can kick them in the head. There you go. Start using some more of those sparks. Try to get another knockdown. But he's doing well, you know? He's definitely shown that, you know, Rex is not well his faults, but like, the main thing about Rex is like, you know, there's gonna be times in his matches where it looks like he's gonna lose and stuff like that. But the main thing he got going, I got going for him is the fact that like he's a powerhouse, just like Damage who won earlier. They're powerhouses, so that's the main thing they got going for them is that they got more than enough power to knock you out with a single shot. You know, even though this game ain't gonna allow for stuff like that to happen, but that's what goes on with him. Because, like, if the game would allow it, I would have certain characters with more than just five for their attributes for, like, offense for the head or body and stuff like that. But the game only allows that much. Okay. He's doing some damage. He needs to build. If he's going to try to win this by building to that super meter, he got to hurry up and do that, man. Because this match is getting away from him right now. What is he doing? Oh, he's going to perform that. Nope, he's not performing the close line. What's he going to do? Oh. But we see that he has that roundhouse head kick that could probably do it. Because I don't think he's going to do it to the super no time soon. Especially when you see him not building energy off of, you know, putting him in submissions. But he did hurt him, you know. But it's not over. He can always hit that roundhouse head kick if he ever goes for it with the rear leg or whatever like that. As I saw him use that earlier, but this match is basically done for. Yeah, it's over with. He, but um, Rex didn't leave this match on scar. It's just that his opponent wasn't really going for knockdown, you know. But he did. It face some adversity and stuff like that. It's just that he was able to do more knockdowns. Pretty sure it was a, a time decision if they were tied, you know, they Suke will have won that. But anyway, we got Victor Flawless taking on the Beast Rex. That's gonna be the final for this third 
fist by chance qualifier for the KO division. So we're gonna see who wins between these two. They're both boxers. It's somewhat of a dirty style that they both use. They kind of more so towards dirty boxing or whatever like that. Where they like to get up close and personal and stuff. They don't really like to throw their strikes from a distance. They like to be in each other's face. And they both don't mind using headbutts and stuff like that. So, ah. That is his go to or uh, his money maker punch. Man, that's a devastating strike. I don't know why the game doesn't have like certain moves with KO damage. And, oh, yeah, I forgot that running grapple that he does is like a clothesline takedown or whatever like that. That does KO damage for him as well. I just thought because how big he is, like him doing that would probably do that type of damage. Oh my god. 25 seconds is all it took for Rex to win this Fist by Chance Qualifier Final. Wow. And that, and that, you know, like, you can say what you want about, um, Rex losing, I mean, not Rex, but, um, about Victor Fallers losing in 25 seconds, but it's just that Rex was able to, like, get his shit going and in a hurry, man. He got all three of those knockdowns quick. Uh, I think each of them was like within the range of like eight seconds each. It only took him 25 seconds, so he averaged one knockdown at almost a little bit over eight seconds. Uh, and you know that time is really supposed to be time and a half, so it actually took him 32 seconds. Not 32, my bad, but 33 or 32 seconds. Yeah. Oh, crap. Well, I can always screenshot it once we're done with this. Yeah, and I can screenshot it to the point where I want it. That's my bad. I forgot to screenshot it just now, but that don't matter. I'll screenshot it in a second. So, we have to, we're going to set up the next one. And that took us, how long did that take us? 21 minutes? That ain't bad. So, this is going to be the final fifth spot chance call for, for the KO division. I'm enjoying these so far, man. These characters that I created, these newest characters I created have not disappointed me so far. So, coming up. Oh, yeah, Wizard. Now, this is the one, like, I thought um, Punch Happy, he has the most, like, capability of becoming the best of the strikers on here. I thought he was going to win his qualifier, but Perfect was able to take him out. But Wizard is actually the one, because I call him the genius wizard or whatever like that. He's actually the one that I think is going to do the best with all this. And lucky enough for us, we actually have two, only two characters to worry about finding. So that's good for me. One thing wrong with that is that they're both from different, what's the name, slots. So... Big one is from slot three, and the other one is from slot. Wait, or is both of them from slot? No, slot two is um, what's his name? Yeah, he's from slot two. Yeah, so we'll start with him because he's at the very top of slot two. Yeah, so we're gonna start with him right quick. Yeah, I really don't want to accidentally save nothing at this point in the game. Yeah. That would be so hard to try to read. Because, like, I got the AI settings and they're looking all that down along with some other stuff. But, like, as far as, like, the movesets, I'm not going to be able to replicate exactly what the heck some of these characters are if I say, say stuff on the wrong thing. So, let's see. Oh, yeah, I'll put it right here. Cause this is supposed to be like, you know, Wizard is supposed to be my character who's supposed to be like the ultimate when it comes to like strategies with the like boxers. That's why I call him the Wizard. Cause when I did the little like somewhat practice matches cause I was trying to do like a, um, you know, a league with just the five boxers, but now I got eight. He did go against Midas Punch, but that was like the old settings for Midas Punch. But he was able to dominate that match pretty easily with the five-round thing. 
you know, he didn't really take too much damage or get knocked down too many times by Minus Punch, so he is a contender, man. He is a contender. I can see him winning this KO division title. Also, you also didn't get to see Rex's finisher. Him and um him and Wizard Rex and Wizard, they are the only um boxers that I created that don't have a striking finisher. Neither one of them have a striking finisher. They both have a grapple finisher. Hopefully you get to see it one day soon in one of these leagues or something like that. Yeah, but like that's what's going on so far with that. Let's see that his stuff is still on here right quick before we upload the other characters. Alright, his stuff is still on here. Now we gotta go to slot number damn it. That was the wrong one. I hate when that shit happens. I'm just glad I didn't. I really actually press load and press save. To tell you the truth, you know, I can deal with actually pressing that. And here goes Striker. Whoa, why the hell did. Make it sure that it's up there. Alright, so. He's more of a kickboxing style slash karate style, you know, more so that sort of thing, whatnot. Same thing with um, Watch My Feet. They're more so, a, you know, a mixed breed of, you know, Watch My Feet is a mixed breed of kickboxing with Taekwondo, and this one is more so karate and kickboxing, you know. They both kind of split with like the disciplines they use, and I knew that was gonna fucking happen, man. Ah, I actually went on slot two and I didn't resave it, so that's why you don't see the stuff of slot two. I knew that shit was gonna happen, man. I knew it was gonna happen. God damn it. See that? That's what happens sometimes. What you just saw right there. Because he disappeared from the top area on here. On the game and stuff like that. I wonder. Let's try this out. That's what happened. Because if I actually, and the thing is, it shouldn't do that because even though that character is from there, I put him under a different thing. He wasn't under A no more. He was under J, but I mean, he was under I, but like, for what reason, that's what happens with this game. You know, I want to see if the one from the bottom disappears on here. Like the one at the top just disappeared. So we got him at the top. Yup, see, he disappeared from down here. Let's check to see if these characters are all still the same with their stuff though. The only thing that's weird or trying to do this while I just deal with this is that if sometimes if they're like, if they're under the same slot, I can't, if they're under the same spot in their slot, like under the A character, I cannot do both of them at the same time. One of them is going to go somewhere over here. But also, if I was sent somebody from B who's from a different slot, it may get rid of this one or that one at the bottom. I usually just do one at a time just for the safety precaution of it, you know, being that. And not really having to worry about nothing else with the game because, like, I don't necessarily like them to be, like, that close with their stuff. You know, because sometimes... It'll say this right now, but like, it'll fucking do something else later on, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm trying to get you to comprehend, because like, there's been plenty of times where like, I saved it and like all this shit is there, and then I go back on there and like, 
their character with their look and their name and all that shit is still there but like the actual stuff that's important like the AI settings and the move set and everything else they do is no longer allowed to be with them. They got all default stuff for their actual like move set and everything else. So top two categories when you create a character which I'll show you. These are just this is for your name and like what sound you make when you do your taunts or when you do a strike or attack a grapple or a strike or something. This is for your parents. This is for your move set, your entire move set, including your taunts. This is for like your behavior in the ring, like how you react to blood, like what type of fighting sound, all that stuff. And this is your AI setting, the one at the bottom. Yeah. So that's all this stuff is. So we're just making sure that the changes I just made stayed on here for the, both these characters. Then we can set this one up. I already know the first character, so that's half the battle right there. Alright. Yeah, so coming up next, this will be the final fifth spot chance qualifier for the occasion. The fourth and final one. Alright, so, oh, both of those are from the shoot things. One of them is no, one of them is from rings, and the other one is from pancreas. Yeah, so we got. Wait, is it, is it supposed to be Tarell first or the other one? Yeah. Tarell? I kind of. I think I should be calling him Tarell or Tarell. Yeah, him. And, so, and then we got. You know. And the other reason that I only like. I don't have like more than one type of outfit for each character before I can know that I already selected the character. So that's how we know that we already selected Midas Punch. Because, I mean, um, Wizard, because you see right there, you got that version of him now, standing right there. So here we go. Okay, I think I need to change this, put this on two rounds. This is supposed to be off. This is supposed to be free. This is also supposed to be. Off. That should be turned on. This should be turned off. This should be, that should be turned off. This should be on, you know, blood stuff. Alright. And pretty much everything's set. So I'll probably be doing this the last Fist Fight Chance qualifier in a little bit later on in the day. What's that? 32 minutes? Yeah, we could basically get out of here. So yeah. Hope you enjoy. The matches was pretty good, but like Rex show how dominant he can be in the final versus Victor by getting him out of there by getting those three knockdowns in just 25 seconds. That was impressive, man. That was impressive. I think that's the quickest that we've seen so far for show AA. I think somebody probably has got somebody out of there in like 20 seconds or something. I'm not sure. But that is one of the quicker times for a fist by chance qualifier since we changed the rules to, you know, quick match and stuff. So that's why that's so quick. I think we have seen somebody get somebody with three knockdowns back when the rules were just, you know, not using quick match. But anyway, it's still impressive. Because you've seen everybody else go on to the second round or damn near over a minute or two versus anybody who they was in the ring with and no no less he was going against one of the other freaking you know craft characters that I made who was also a boxer you know so that was very impressive you know and Victor Flawless actually got a flawless victory against him ah hate to see that happen all right so yeah again hope you enjoy and all that other good stuff and hope you like the these newest characters and stuff like that and to the next one later and I may put Legway in like the MMA division or something yeah I'm thinking about it he may go into the MMA division or the, probably to the absolute division yeah I'm gonna put him in absolute division because his style is you know 
anything goes with your striking and absolute division. Almost anything goes with third matches anyway. You got every single style, every single way to win with the fifth spot chance qualifier over there, along with the fifth spot chance and the ranking match. And even if you can't win by blood stops in our contenders match, I can still see Legway getting victories over there as well. So that way he may be come show nine a or something like that or he may be back over here who knows but we're probably going to continue to do four freaking fist bar chances for the um ko division i decided that instead of making the full eight for slot number four before we get to um show nine a i'm probably just gonna make two more characters they both could be grapplers because I want to have some more grapplers as far as, you know, the grappling divisions, fist by chance qualifiers. Because look at that. There's only two people over here. But the thing is, a lot of the people I create can also go to MMA and PW and the Absolute Division. But, like, you know, like, those divisions are unmagically going to have some of my characters in it, you know? I need to make people who are especially good for grappling because I already went above and beyond because on top of the 11 new characters I got who are part of this, there's still like, you know, a good like portion of the people that I created could have all been in the KO division. Some of them could have been in the grappling division as well. I'm not going to lie. I can see, um, who else I can see in this division? I can see freaking, um, Lion coming over to be in this and I also can see Dave Monster yeah he's another one who could be in this division along with um a couple other people but you know but character specialists that I want to make like the strikers these 11 new strikers I only made two there are well three of them if you count Jake Shock who's going to be in the MMA division fist by chance qualifier but and um Yokozuna that's well, that does give you about four of them. But I'm saying there could be more characters that are just straight up grapplers that I can make. So that's what the next two characters are going to be. And I may end up making three new grapplers or whatever like that. Who knows? But that's what I'm currently thinking about designing new type of grappler characters to create. So yeah, until the next one later. Hope you enjoy and everything. And... Alright, 37 minutes. That's not bad.